Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode number 75, featuring an interview with two of the world's most foremost experts in the subject of games for girls, Megan Geiser and Robert Riedel, the president and executive producer of Her Interactive. I started out as a filmmaker, so I, I was a producer and editor, and um, I really got interested in multimedia, um, the kind of non-linear um, Format and I knew in, that Seattle was kind of the hub of that. I was in DC at the time, and uh, so in '94 I moved to Seattle uh, without a job, and um, I got a job at Microsoft for a little while. Learned a lot there, um, and then someone introduced me to the CEO of Her Interactive. Um, they needed a creative director, um, and they they just got the Nancy Drew license. I knew nothing about games, um, but I love Nancy Drew, and I just thought the idea of kind of transforming that mystery experience into an interactive experience was really exciting. Um, so I took the job. And um, do you know the story of, of Her Interactive and how we got into retail? Yes, but I would like to hear it again. I was uh, reading a little uh, bit about the Amazon self-publishing. Oh, yeah. Um, Okay, well, so so Ben uh, came on board and Robert was there at the time. Um, we were a small crew and uh, we, you know, I knew nothing about games when I got the job. Um, I didn't even know that there weren't any games for girls, which completely shocked me. Um, but we were so excited and we all got together and created this great game. And uh, when we finished, uh, it took us about a year and a half. We went to the publishers to get it on the retail shelves, and um, they said, "You know, the game is is quality, but basically, girls are computer phobic, so they'll never play video games. So we're not going to take it." And we were, you know, completely dumbfounded. We couldn't believe it, but um, we we knew there, you know, I mean, there are 51 percent um, females in the population, and then they target females with all other mediums, books, music, uh, films, and so we decided to take it into our own hands and um, we learned to be publishers ourselves. We learned how to do packaging, PR, marketing, and we sold it to Amazon. And luckily the game sales really took off and um, the New York Times dubbed us the Unbarbie of computer games, uh, which we're so proud of. and. Um, Sure enough, the same publishers came back and that's how we got into retail. And then once we were in retail, we realized, you know, the publishers are making the lion's share of the profit, so why don't we just uh, do what we did on Amazon, learn how to be publishers. Uh, so we found somebody to teach us and um, two years later uh, we were publishers and it was our first profitable year in 2002. What about you, Robert? I know you want to get in here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I um, I had been making computer games since I was a teenager. Um, my first computer was a TI-99 4A, and so uh, I played a lot of text-based adventure games and tried to create them as well. So I'd always just, you know, kind of try different games, try different ideas, never really thinking you could get paid to do that. <laughs> um, and so I actually started with American Laser Games, which Her Interactive spun off of, um, as as an accountant, and uh, there was a opening up in product development, and I said I'd be interested. I knew something about computer games, and I knew something about Nancy Drew having two older sisters. That's what I had to read as hand me downs. Um, so that's how that's how I got into this crazy world. I read a story about um, her interactive sending secrets can kill to uh, the one of the authors, <laughs> like this ninety year old. Uh, author you know could you tell that could you tell that story okay so our first game uh, secrets can kill we um, realized that the writer of the Nancy Drew games uh, the one there were many writers Carolyn Keene was uh, you know the name for a lot of them but sure uh, but um, Mildred Bird oh get that picture 
Mildred Wirt Benson was um, probably, she wrote most of the Nancy Drew books. And uh, so we found out that she was a reporter at the Toledo Blade in Ohio doing a column for 60 year olds and over. And um, we sent her chocolates and flowers and a letter from our signed by everybody on the team. And we said, you know, thank you so much. You're our inspiration. And, um, and she called me back and she um, was, uh, she said something like, that was my former life. You know, I've moved on or whatever. She was very, very humble. She was a total character. And, um, and so, Actually, she was Nancy Drew. I mean, she uh, flew planes in her 30s, and uh, and I, I she also um, had a people kind of pictorial profile in People magazine, where there was a picture of her on her um, stairmaster at 92, and um, she was quite a character. Um, so, uh, you know, that's kind of been our inspiration. And Robert brought in, um, this, is, this is a picture of Mildred. And this is the letter that she sent back to us. She was going blind at the time. So she said, you know, I'm going to have my assistant play the game. And I'm going to give you a little plug in my 60-year-old Nover column, which she did. And um, anyway, it was, it was really amazing. Now, what is the relationship between the, the game designs and the books? I know there's some that are based directly on the books, and I guess Secrets of uh, Secrets Can Kill wasn't, if I'm not mistaken, that was based on one of the case files, mm -hmm. uh, Nancy Drew case files, but the other ones are based, <laughs> the other ones that are based on Nancy Drew, are they also case files? Or do you, uh, I guess they're, the, the one with yeah, the they're case from case. a wide range of, of books, so anything from the original Yellowbacks, like uh, uh, Secret of Shadow Ranch, to um, the following mystery story, case stories that Simon Schuster produced, uh, such as Whispers in the Fog, which was a uh, basis for Dan uh, um, Danger on Deception Island. Um, and Simon Schuster uh, gives us great latitude. They're the owners of the property and publishers of the books. They gave us a great latitude on um, what, we can, we, what we can do when we base the games on the book. They don't have to be um, literally, literally um, uh, uh, based on them, or a lot of times they're just used as springboards for inspiration. Example is uh, Curse of Blackmore Manor, which is based, based on the Bluebeard Room, and the two elements that were taken from that original uh, original story was the name Penvalin and that it was set in England. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can see this. I got I can. Uh, the updated uh, Secrets Can Kill here. I know that uh, the viewers would be curious about this uh, remake. You know, why did you decide to uh, remake this game you know, instead of just making a new game? What, or, uh, you know, what's the story of uh, this remake here? Well, the first part of it is that you know, in honor of the Nancy Drew 80th anniversary, we thought it would be really fun to go back and revisit the first game we did and to update it and change the ending and just really for our fans. Um, so that was the impetus and um, you wanna? Yeah, and also there is technical reasons too. Uh, the, the original Secrets Can Kill was built on old technology that we no longer use. So as Megan said, an update um, uh, allowed us to do more with it, um, such as localize and, and things like that. Are there plans to remake some of the other early games, or? We're 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 talking about it. It's, um, yeah, it's it's kind of uh, uh, it's been very well received, and uh, you know the fans really like it, and people who have never played our games before are are trying it out. So, um, uh, yeah. And my favorite in the series is uh, "Stay Tuned for Danger." <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, Just waiting, yeah. Uh, waiting for that. But yeah, you. Why did you like that game? I you know I just I uh, thought it was a really fascinating uh, setting. You mm -hmm. know all the characters and everything. I also thought uh, Danger by Design was really a uh, high point. Uh, with the what was it the woman that kept saying everything was rude? <laughs> yeah, uh, Minette. <laughs> uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, she was, it's just, it's fun making these characters, like Rick Arlen was just, it was so fun to create this sleazy, you know, so self-involved, egotistical star. 
Um, and Manette was great too. She was a lot of fun to, to make into this crazy fashion, <laughs> yeah, character. I thought uh, Secrets of, I guess probably the Shadow Ranch. Is it uh, Secrets of Shadow Ranch? Secret of Shadow Ranch. Yeah. The, the Secret of uh, Shadow Ranch. That was uh, another one of my favorites. And, I mean, how can you forget those uh, characters in that? <laughs> yeah. And the great, great music too. Uh, I mean, how do you get the music? Is it just a guy that you contract out, or you know, how does he? How yeah. does this work? Yeah, we've been working with Kevin Manthe from the start. Um, he's a composer in the LA area. Um, he does film score as well as game score. Uh, so he has a huge long list of credits. Um, but he's great to work with because he's always up for a new challenge because we're always going to a different locale, need a different instrumentation, um, different um, ethnic you know, s sound, a different sound. So uh, for the one in Japan, he was very hesitant to do J-pop kind of tunes. Uh, but once he started getting into it, he really enjoyed it and, and had, a, had a good time. So uh, he's, he's just amazing, very, very, um, gifted composer. We're lucky to have had him all the way through. And we also are, have been using the same um, woman to do the voice of Nancy Drew since the very beginning. So it's, uh, Lonnie, she's Lonnie also, Alley, yeah, Lana lot of finale. She's incredibly talented. And uh, she does quite a few voices actually, uh, not just Nancy Drew, the parrot. Yeah, she can do parrots, she can, <laughs> any, anything you can come up with. She did the, she, oh, she did the parrot? <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah, she was Lulu the parrot and Fugu. Oh, Lulu! Yeah, wow. yeah, and it was amazing because when I when I called her and said, "Hey, Lonnie, can you do a parrot voice?" She's like, "Do you want African Grey? Do you want Budgerger? Do you want Scarlet Macaw?" <laughs> and I, I'm a bird watcher, and so I know these birds and what they sound like. And so I was testing her, and she could actually sound just have that that kind of yeah that sense of that bird. It was very spooky. Hold on to your hat! Oh my gosh! Ta da! Well, that's that's it. that's all everything I can uh, think of. Unless there's uh, extra stories that you want to tell, I didn't ask. Maybe uh, how Kroll Meister's doing in the recession or something. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's um, um, DJ Kroll Meister's still doing uh, quite yeah, well. Yeah, Kroll Meister is still very away. <laughs> I you still don't understand. The, how he succeeds with all those odd contraptions he made, <laughs> user unfriendly um, creations. But there's got to be a market out there somewhere. Nancy, <laughs> Nancy always stumbles onto his wares. We create these crazy characters that we love so much. We want to just continue with. So we had to put Coco Kringle bars throughout the games, and so we just decided for um, Todd for um, the t Twister game is to create a whole line of candy bars and we actually solicited ideas from uh all over the office of you know what should the names be and some the of the winners them, yeah yeah the winners are good and some of the ones some of them we just couldn't put in for family reasons but yeah I was, i'm always curious when i see pictures like images of actual people in the games and those they were a lot of you know, secrets can kill are those family members and friends and family or is that uh, um, just random that, stock yeah. footage or what what is that it's a combination, yeah. yeah. There's some friends and family and, and workers, and we have contest winners too, so when we do contests, some of the um, prizes will be that your name gets to be in, in the next game. Or a picture of you. Yeah. Um, in Secrets Can Kill, um, we're in a photo, everyone on the team at the time, um, I think it was... Students of the Month. Students of the Month, so we named ourselves Students of the Month. and. But for the it's revision, we did it. We yeah. opened it up to the contest winners. And also the artwork, um, that, the student artwork was also a contest winner. So they were actual users, players who had submitted their artwork. And they're in the game, which is totally cool, their artwork. So, um, yeah, that was pretty amazing. Well, thanks so much for agreeing to uh, talk to me today. Sure, thank, thank you, Thank you, you so thank much, Matt. No, oh, no problem. My pleasure. Really appreciate it. Enjoy the the fall. <laughs> I just I just remember the happy, really happy the, the, the years back in the Midwest. <laughs> oh well, maybe there'll be some uh, new Nancy Drew games to. Uh, yeah, that could be good. Wintry hours. <laughs> Definitely.